Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Jane Stevens. I'm the training manager here at Solo, and today we are talking about mortgages. So I'm joined here today uh, by Mahir. So Mahir, good morning or good afternoon. Thank you for joining me today. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so I'm just going to admit a few people who are still joining us. And while we're waiting for everybody to be here, um, I will just uh, go over a couple of things. So just a few housekeeping items. As you guys hopefully know already, there are some more support lines, help lines available to you guys. So if you have any questions about onboarding, if you're brand new to Zolo, you haven't quite gotten your leads turned on yet, there is an email that you can reach out to onboarding at Zolo.ca. Um, once your leads are turned on, once you've completed your training and your mock offer, uh, and if you have questions about your CRM, then you can reach out to realtor underscore support at Zolo zolo.ca and anything deal related please reach out to your team team lead or growth manager and uh, we'll be able to help you through those uh through those deals so uh, again today we are talking about mortgages and uh, i have me here joining us here today so hello hello uh again i'm just admitting a few people here uh while we're doing that i will just share with you guys this month's calendar so that you know what it is that we're offering so we do have this available on the work Place group. You can see this under the training channel. So we have every Thursday a guest speaker. So uh, today we're talking to Mahir with Ad Solo Mortgages. He's going to um, answer all of your questions. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to that. I know we just recently did working with buyers and you guys did have a lot of mortgage related questions. So uh, hopefully you're back <laughs> and uh, you brought your, your questions. All right, so let's get started again. Um, just a quick mention, the Academy, uh, you can find that in your CRM, the tools drop down menu, the second option there gives you access to your online Academy. So that gives you um, a list of courses that you can take, you can retake, you can definitely look up resources there. And all of our sessions are recorded. So um, this one uh, will also be recorded and available on the YouTube channel. So I'm gonna let me here take it over. Good afternoon, Mahir. I will let you take over the screen share so that we can get started on today's topic. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Jay. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Mahir. I'm going to be talking to you today about solo mortgages, of course. Uh, let me just go over today's topic. I'm going to be introducing uh, myself and the brokerage, solo mortgages as a whole. We're going to be talking a little bit about rates that uh, Zolo Mortgages offers. I know a lot of you are new to the business, so I'm going to be explaining how to easily do or how to easily refer clients to us for free approvals. And on June 1st, so just about you know, 14 days away, um, there are some new rules that are taking place for uninsured purchases, which are very important for you to understand. Uh, so we'll be going over that extensively, actually. And since uh, since a lot of agents at Zolo are working lease leads, uh, we've realized that there is the opportunity there to convert lease leads to buys on quite a lot of occasions. So we want to make sure that you recognize that opportunity and how best to uh, qualify or refer those clients to Zolo Mortgages to give you a rock solid idea as to if those clients would be good buyers. And then there's a couple of other programs I'm gonna be discussing. There's New to Canada, and then for some reason, the rest of the programs are not on this list. Uh, New to Canada, there's self-employed, and uh, there's some high GDSTDS programs as well. Okay, so let's get started here. Um, yeah, this is Zolo Mortgages. Zolo Mortgages is a sister company to Zolo Real Estate. We work out of the same offices. Uh, we work the same leads as you do. Our job is entirely related to the mortgage side. Uh, we are licensed in Ontario and BC. And the easiest way to refer deals to us now, because we've reached a certain amount of volume where we're not able to take phone calls for every single deal, is to email us your referrals at mortgages at zolo.ca or if your clients are extremely motivated, direct them uh, to the zolo.ca slash mortgages front end where they can fill out an application for uh, a mortgage and one of our agents will be in touch with them. So once again, please refer clients to us through email. Uh, you may see 
Prince posting from time to time on the Zolo uh, Mortgages Workplace channel, which is also a great place to network with us. We're trying to keep that as updated as possible for real estate agents. So you're aware of what Zolo can offer in terms of rates. Here are some examples of, of the current rates that we are uh, actively marketing to clients on all sides of the business. These are all mostly for purchases, um, as you may be able to tell, probably under 20%, basically. Um, that seems to be the most competitive and most active market for us right now. We have a lot of clients that are high ratio. So we say uh, less than 20% down is high ratio on our end. And that's where the rates are the lowest. So these are some of the lowest rates you're gonna see in the industry. We're very competitive with that. Uh, you can see a uh, second from the bottom over here. I'm not sure if you can see my mouse, but we do have alternate rates as well. And our alternate rates are for clients who have high GDS, TDS, or may have some bruising on their credit or whatever other reasons or uh, they, they may not qualify for on what we call the ASI. So we do have some alternate lending and we also have some private lending for clients who are um, just in you know very tough situations or they are open to high interest mortgages uh, that are interest only so that they can leverage uh, potentially buying properties that they wouldn't qualify for anywhere else. So uh, we have a lot of investor clients. We have a lot of clients who have who own a, a quite a large portfolio of properties uh, of various aspects and private lending is sometimes the only option to qualify. So we do have those options available. Uh, it looks like we're going to hop right into pre-approvals here. And uh, I understand um, the vast majority of you may be new to the business. So once again, uh, pre-approvals are uh, the process of uh, verifying the eligibility of a client to be able to purchase a home. A pre-approval qualifies a client only in their ability to purchase. It does not guarantee that the client will uh, qualify, um, will be able to purchase a specific home. So what I'm trying to say is, what we're doing is we're verifying the client's ability to purchase. We're not vetting the property that the mortgage is going to be lent on. If uh, there's no way for us to do that, essentially, uh, what we're finding is that on the lower end price points, there are a lot of very old condos. And uh, if it's a high ratio purchase, meaning less than 20% down and it's insured, it means that there's a third party involved in the purchase, not just the lender and the borrower, but also a mortgage insurer. I'm going to be talking a little bit about that in one of the upcoming slides. And the mortgage insurers are the ones that give the thumbs up or the thumbs down when it comes to approving a property for a purchase. And if it's a very old condo, then it's very likely to have issues with a uh, status certificate. Uh, specifically, there may be special assessments coming where there's large costs going to be passed on to current owners, or there may be some lawsuits that the corporation is involved in. And all of those are big no-nos when it comes to mortgage insurance. So I'll, I'll reiterate this again. Our pre-approvals are approving the client's ability to buy a home we are not pre-approving the client's property in any way, okay? So it, it's a green light for you to go out and place an offer and do the effort to go work with the client. But at the end of the day, there may be still some risk involved with the property that your client is buying. It's very important that if your client is pre-approved with buy Zola mortgages, that before placing an offer, especially an unconditional offer, you reach out to whichever mortgage agent was helping you with the pre-approval. Um, so just to give you some background, we have about 13 or 14 active mortgage agents at any time. And when you send in a referral to mortgages at solo.ca, it's me you're reaching out to, my name is Mihir. I will be assigning the leads for pre-approval to our active mortgage agents and making sure that, let's say you have a client who may speak Punjabi, I'm referring you to a Punjabi mortgage agent. Um, we also have agents who speak French. Uh, we have agents from uh, all of the African nations. So whatever African language your clients may speak, uh, all of the Indian uh, languages we have covered. Um, 
We unfortunately do not have any agents who speak any of the Chinese languages, but that's something that I'm looking to fill uh, you know, desperately. Um, and yeah, you just let me know what your client's preferences are and I will accommodate them in terms of language. Um, let me just uh, recap here and see if I missed anything. So if you are uh, looking to refer a client for pre-approval, please email the client's contact page on the Zolo CRM. So just copy and paste the URL from the Zolo CRM into an email and give me a brief write-up as to what the client is um, you know, trying to do. Are they trying to purchase? Are they looking for a refinance? What is the nature of the purchase? So uh, primary residence means for them, or is it an investment property? Um, it's one of the things here that I'm mentioning is when you're going out for showings with a client or when you're trying to discuss um, what a client is looking for, do not ask them what price range they're comfortable looking at. Because a client will say to you, hey, you know what? Uh, I think we can go up to $1.2 million. And do I have it here? I do have it here. One of the things I've, I've realized is that neither the real estate agent nor the client is aware of the minimum down payment requirements on $1 million purchases. So uh, late last year, we had a client who had placed an offer on a million dollar property. They were at like 1.3 or $1.4 million. And they had not gotten pre-approved with anyone. And the real estate agent called me and he said, my client has 5% down on a $1 million plus purchase. And he asked me to get him qualified. Um, you think about all the effort you go through when you're buying with a client, right? You, the amount of showings that you're doing, the amount of gas you're spending, the amount of time you're spending with the client. And then to find out with an accepted offer that your client does not qualify for the mortgage, is heartbreaking, right? Because not only have you lost your client, but you've lost your significant investment you've put into getting your client to a certain point. So it's very important. It's very important that your your client is pre-approved by someone. Now I'm here to promote Zillow mortgages, but at the same time, I understand that clients may not be comfortable with mortgage brokerage, or they may already have an existing relationship with a bank. What you have to realize as a real estate agent is, as long as they are pre-approved by some legitimate organization, whether it's a bank, a brokerage, a credit union, that's enough. But make sure that they are actually doing their due diligence as to what they qualify, okay? We're very transparent about our pre-approvals with clients where we're looping you as real estate agents into the conversation. We're saying, thank you very much for the referral. Here is the maximum amount your qual client qualifies for. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we've done our due diligence in confirming income, confirming liabilities, and confirming down payment. And ideally, this would be the max purchase price that you go for. One of the things that we are also doing is we're specifically saying, look, it's $600,000 as a freehold property that your client you know, qualifies for max. But if they're looking for condos, the max they can do is $500,000. Now, why is there a, a difference between a condo and a freehold? You think about the monthly costs. With condos, you have condo fees. You may actually additionally be paying for things like heating or water. Those are all things that um, those are all things that you have to consider as uh, monthly costs uh, that do add to uh, your client's ability to borrow. So, in uh, in situations where your client may be looking at a condo. Um, because there is nothing in a freehold price range for them to consider, then they may actually qualify for less on a purchase price because of the higher monthly costs involved with maintaining a condo. Um, Jane, do we have questions going or is there a comment section that we're doing? There is a chat, um, but we don't have any questions yet. So if anybody does have questions, feel free to drop them in the chat and I will bring them up and ask them here. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. Uh, open forum, everyone, please. If uh, I'm moving too quickly or if you have any specific questions on what I'm saying, feel free to ask in chat. Um, we also have the Zillow Mortgages Workplace channel, so we do try to answer questions there. The Realtor Support email doesn't currently have any mortgage-related ability to help. 
but that's something I may look at helping develop uh, for that program in the future. But uh, let's just go back here to pre-approvals. Um, right. So, of course, because we're dealing with sort of cold leads, the, the important part with pre-approvals is to build the trust with your clients uh, and send them to mortgage specialists to get an honest opinion. Most leads do not qualify for the amount that they think they do. So once again, going back to this example that I just showed you, uh, most clients are not aware of the minimum down payment requirements across the board. So it's not limited to us. We're not the ones enforcing these down payment limits. This is every bank, every brokerage, every credit union has to follow these rules. These are OPSI rules for minimum down payment. So we're doing our jobs in educating clients as to minimum down payment requirements, credit requirements, and uh, ratios in terms of whether there's, uh, you know, maybe some other form of employment that we can use or income. Uh, the Canada Health Benefit is something that we've really used quite extensively to get the clients over the threshold to qualify for a purchase. So we have we know all our our tricks to get clients qualified. Here is uh, just a breakdown of what we're using to qualify clients. So qualification is based on existing debt, credit score, and income. Those are the three major cri uh, criteria we're using to qualify clients. We're basing those, uh, those criteria, or we're, we're sort of boiling them down into these two ratios, which are our gross debt service and our total debt service. So gross debt service is uh, the liabilities, meaning just uh, without holding the mortgage uh, over their income. And uh, the total debt service is liabilities plus the mortgage costs over their income. We do have options available with slight rate premiums, as I mentioned earlier, uh, for clients who do have good credit scores, but too much debt. So they may not qualify at these ratios at 39.44. We have very good programs that lenders are calling near prime programs, which are great if your clients are just slightly overextending themselves when it comes to purchases. Um, we do have options available for clients with previous bankruptcies or proposals. Why that's important for you to know is this is actually becoming more and more common. And within our uh, realm in the mortgage industry, mortgage brokers are the pretty much only avenue that clients who do have previous bankruptcies or proposals may be able to pursue at reasonable rates. Uh, we've seen uh, basically like without you know revealing information we have clients who are released from consumer proposals and the next week we are able to qualify them for a mortgage right so it's important that if your client does disclose they may have a big bankruptcy or a proposal uh, that we do have options for them as well we have private options also available we use that in a very limited capacity because we don't feel like it's the best option for a client in all situations, we're very careful about when we do refer business to a private lender because it is the very last line of mortgage lending. And to the client, what's important to understand or what's important for us to disclose is that when it comes to private lending, these are interest only payments that the client is making. So they're not paying down their principal of the mortgage like they would with any alternate or uh, posted rate mortgages. Private mortgages are the last option just to close on a property, in my opinion, or if it's a short-term hold or a flip or some sort of rental job, a private makes sense because we can get something like a six month open term where the client can buy the property, do the renovation, list it and sell it at fairly low rates and not have to worry about a long-term mortgage penalty with, with a lender. Um, Okay, um, let me just, there is some stuff I want to cover before getting to questions. So let me just um, cover the basics here. Uh, we spoke briefly about the minimum down payment. I wanna make sure that everyone is clear. The minimum down payment on the first $500,000 of any purchase is 5%. 
and then 10% on the next $499,000, as you can see there. And then if the purchase price is $1 million or above, then the total down payment must equal 20%, okay? Here's an example of an $800,000 uh, purchase. The minimum down payment on an $800,000 purchase would be 5% on the $500,000, on the first $500,000, and 10% on the next $300,000. Um, you know, 500 plus 300 equals 800. So if you're confused about what we're trying to break down, uh, this is what it's like. If you're familiar with taxes, it's very much like pocketed tax law where uh, above a certain threshold, you're subject to a different percentage of taxes. That's exactly what this is sort of mirroring. So in this case, the client would put 25K plus 30K, that works out to uh, what, uh, 55K? Yeah, 50, 25 plus 35, no, that's 60K or something like that. Yeah, 60K, sorry, I'm doing math in my head. <clears throat> Um, okay, and uh, one of the things we touched on briefly is what is mortgage insurance? Uh, mortgage insurance is paid on any mortgage where the down payment is less than 20%. So from the previous slide, I think you can make the assumption here that only purchases below a million dollars can have mortgage insurance because million dollars plus requires 20% down minimum. The amount of mortgage insurance varies. It's based on purchase price and also down payment. Okay, so a client who's paying 5% down, for example, will be paying much more mortgage insurance than a client who's paying 15% down. Uh, the mortgage insurance premium is added to the mortgage principal. So in the previous example with the down payments being $60,000, so 800 minus 60, would be 740 loan amount. The 740 loan amount would, would be added to with the mortgage insurance. And that mortgage insurance can be up to 25 to $30,000 depending on the down payment. So it would go from 740 to let's say 770 with the added mortgage insurance. And then uh, uh, that would be calculated into the payments. On closing, the additional costs with insured mortgages is that the client will have to pay PST at closing, so that's, that's an additional closing cost. Uh, is there any way around this? So far, the only way around this is to, is to um, pay the 20% down. So here's, the, here's something that uh, I feel like is really beneficial for you as real estate agents is this unbranded realtor.ca calculator for mortgages. It's at realtor.ca slash calculator. There are multiple different calculators here. So you can sit down with your clients and say, okay, we're in a purchase. The asking price is $800,000. Let's see what the minimum down payments are, or let's see what the scenarios are. And this breaks down all of the costs for you in a great way. As we discussed, uh, the minimum down payment, I'm uh, sorry with that. The, the minimum down payment is 6.88%, which is 55K. I guess I did the math wrong, sorry about that, for um, an $800,000 purchase and then a $30,000 mortgage insurance. So you, from our example, you can see that works out to 774, 758, right? This would be the total mortgage required. This is what we're qualifying the clients on. Uh, let's just go with the 25 year amortization and let's just say 2% so you can calculate your payments and you can understand how payments change. And of course, as down payment goes up, your payments go down and highlighting here that 20% down has no mortgage insurance, okay? So these are great, great calculators for you to use with your clients. Uh, and there are options here, for example, for first time home buyers, and it does change as well for land transfer tax, which is you know, significant cost, especially if you're buying in Toronto, as opposed to any other city in uh, Ontario. So let's just, uh, what's something that you're all familiar with, maybe Vaughn? Oh, very common. And you can see the land transfer tax for the municipal portion or municipal portion is gone. 
So only Toronto has double land transfer tax. And if your client is a first time home buyer, it even tells them what the rebate for the first time home buyer purchase um, rebate is when it comes to land transfer tax. Uh, then there are some other options here, uh, which are really important for your clients to know when it comes to closing costs, what they will have to have available in their bank, bank account at closing, what we quote, uh, what, what actually we require all our clients to have is the total down payment plus 1.5% of the purchase price in closing costs. And that rough 1.5% in closing costs covers these the costs, right? So PSD on mortgage insurance, as discussed, um, land claims for taxes, lawyers' fees, title insurance, and then other cash considerations, which are very important as well, appraisal fees, home inspection fees, and then a total breakdown of, let's say, total carrying costs for this home, including utilities, phone, cable, internet, property insurance. So this is a great, great tool I really recommend you use this, especially because this is available without any branding. And uh, once you do have an idea of what the client can afford, or once you have given them this information, both you and the client are in a much better space. You um, really make the decision as to financially, what is the correct way of approaching a mortgage. And um, I'll just go through the, the other two calculators here quickly. Let's just say it's a, you know, you're doing a scenario example with a client where they're saying, hey, look, I'm going to buy a property that's $900,000. I'm trying to figure out what the difference in cost is if I were to buy in Toronto. So the municipal land transfer tax is here. And you can see the difference. How much would I save if I bought in Toronto versus, let's say, North York or Markham or Richmond Hill? And you can just type in Richmond Hill, for example. And you can see, okay, look, just moving a little bit further north, you're already saving $14,000 in your land transfer tax. That's much less closing costs. You can apply that either as an improvement on the home or let's say towards uh, the purchase price. So maybe we can actually increase the purchase price by uh, a smaller margin, let's say you know, almost exactly what the land transfer tax is. And that way, maybe you could get a better home or a bigger home. Once again, realtor.ca slash calculator. I actively encourage you to use this when, even if you're on the phone with the client, you know, and they're asking you questions, um, this would be a great time or great uh, tool to use. Um, yes, I think uh, I, I discussed this, realtor.ca. And uh, I'm gonna take a little break from my slides now. And let's hop into some questions because I think a couple have come in. Uh, so, Jane, would it be okay if I read and answered the questions, or, or how would you like to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you have visibility to them, great. Yeah, just whichever ones you want to address in whichever order is fine. Okay, awesome. So, uh, Monier asked, do we, have, do we have mortgage loans for commercial properties or industrial on a case-by-case -case basis? Yes, we do. Um, it is always, when it comes to commercial and industrial properties, it is a, you know, it, Every deal is different, right? Every deal has to be approached differently. We have to potentially look at the business case for commercial or industrial loans as well. If it's a residential flip or if someone is buying a property to do a teardown and a build, so it's a construction loan, we're looking at that differently than we are um, anything else. It's really important that we have all the details. We do have the ability to lend on commercial and industrial and private and you know, commercial uh, construction, whatever you can think of, but we will say no a lot because realistically, um, a lot of people who approach us with these ideas do not have anything thought out beyond, hey, look, I've heard about a commercial loan or a construction loan, and, you know, I don't know the details. I don't know what's available. I may be working in the industry as a tradesperson, but I may not have the capital. These are all issues that we've run into on the mortgage side. And uh, if, you know, because uh, I know Kevin, the broker of record is starting a commercial team. If there is something that takes off on the commercial side, we may have someone come in and do a commercial only uh, mortgage session for you. But so far we just don't have the volume. 
Uh, do all mortgages have similar breakdowns as Zolo, 5% of 510? Yes, yes they do. It doesn't matter if you're a bank or a credit union or a brokerage, we're all governed by the same rules on down payment. Uh, Marguerite asks, uh, here, Zolo has a section that says average properties are sold in Ajax or Richmond Hill is six days. Is this info updated regularly? I do not know, to be very honest with you. Um, if that's something you're seeing on the front end, then that is all auto-generated information based on what the system is calculating for average selling, uh, average days on market, I could say. I believe my knowledge that is calculated every single day along with the average selling price for all of these homes. So very, um, very unqualified to actually answer that question, but uh, from what I do know, uh, that is updated regularly. Uh, what is the difference between pre-approval and pre-qualified? I get confused with these two terms. Are we looking at pre-approval or pre-qualification when dealing with a buyer? Okay, this is a question from Jennifer Fu. Uh, it's a good question. The majority of um, people in the mortgage space use the term pre-approval or pre-qualified interchangeably, meaning they're both referring to the same thing. Within Zola Mortgages, how we're distinguishing a pre-qualification versus a pre-approval is a pre-qualification is a verbal phone call where we're discussing, okay, we see that you have the income, that you have the uh, debts, and this is the maximum purpose you can do. To us, anything verbal we refer to as a pre-qualification. A pre-approval is us doing the due diligence and then putting something on paper, either through a lender letterhead or on Zolo letterhead that says, this client has been pre-approved, we have verified all the information, and this is the max they can approve. Uh, this is the max they are approved for, pardon me. And so in a pre-approval, we are issuing something on letterhead in writing to the client that says, you are pre-approved and you're good to go for this purchase price. Uh, I hope that's clear. I hope that helps. We're trying our best to do as many pre-qualifications as possible, but based on what client comfort level is, um, that is, I mean, clients sometimes don't want to fill out applications. They don't want to give information. So that's why we have to, uh, within our own sort of risk tolerances, not give out anything in writing. If the client is uh, inquiring verbally, we reply verbally. Uh, how much is the fee? It depends on what the, pro the the client is looking for. So let me go back to rates. Uh, here we are with rates. So for the one, two, three, four, for the first four rates, there are no fees at all to the client. Uh, actually, for uh, this, the fifth one as well, there are no fees to the client from the brokerage, but lenders do issue lender fees. That lender fee is 1%. And there is no way around that in the alternate space. For the private space, depending on the risk of the mortgage, the fee can be up to 3% from the lender. Um, we're trying our best to not uh, charge clients fees. Our focus is on customer service and facilitating real estate business. And we feel the best way to do that is to minimize our fee. Once again, almost no fees on the first, sorry, zero fees on the one, two, three, four. On the first four rates here that you're seeing, zero fees. There's a 1% lender fee on all alternate lending and up to a 3% fee on the private side. It's on a deal by deal, risk by risk basis. Do we get any referral fee? At this time, there is no referral fee from the mortgage side to the real estate side. Do pre approval clients can we financing condition? No, that is not um, something we recommend or something that. Um, something that waving something that a pre-approval should be used for okay so it's a great question let me go back to the pre-approval screen um what's a relevant screen for me to be on for this yeah let me be on this screen when it comes to qualifying criteria when it comes to a pre-approval all we're saying is that a client has passed the pre-approval criteria that we have listed here uh, i briefly touched on uh the mortgage mortgage insurance and what the mortgage insurance means and what it plays into the purchase of a, of a property. It is completely possible that we will pre-approve a client, 
that they will have an accepted offer on a property, but there will be something wrong with the property that the mortgage lender or the mortgage insurer will not be comfortable lending on. Uh, the example I gave most prominently was older condos. If you're looking, uh, pardon me, if you are an active real estate agent in the GTA or the GTHA, let's say, one of the most appealing price points is condos that for whatever reason seem to be very low priced in Toronto or in um, what's a region that has some older condos, maybe Hamilton, you know, um, London as well. There are quite a lot of old condos out in these suburbs. And with old condos, there are risks such as major maintenance issues that have been overlooked for a significant amount of time that are all of a sudden coming due. And that could mean that there's gonna be massive, um, massive fees to new buyers or to existing owners of the property. Those are called special assessments. And uh, there could also be major lawsuits that the condo corporation is facing because they have been negligent in doing their maintenance and either someone got hurt on the property or something is wrong with the property that someone who lives there is suing the condo corporation to fix. All of these issues are not something that we, we can vet when it comes to our pre-approvals. So this is why we recommend that absolutely if a client can be in a position to do a mortgage financing condition, to do it, regardless of if they are pre-approved or not, because there is always a, a small risk that the lender may not lend on a property because of some sort of stigma or some sort of real damage uh, financially that the corporation may be suffering. What we're starting to see a lot of in areas, well, I mean, it's, it's pretty standard in Toronto, but we're starting to see it in other areas as well is pre-inspection reports when it comes to purchase properties. So the listing agent will have an inspection report completed by a third party inspector and have it available for all potential buyers so that on offer date, you can come in with potentially no financing and no inspection condition. It's important to review these inspection reports for major issues such as structural issues, especially in basements, mold, um, and any other defects that may be listed. And to before placing an offer in multiples or going in without any condition on a pre-approval, to speak to your mortgage uh, advisor, whether it's us or someone else, and say, here is the property address. Do you think you can lend on this property? We will either run it by the insurer, that specific address, and say, we have clients going in without a financing condition. Are there any issues with this property? And they have a huge database of condos, freeholds that they review. And they say, yeah, you know, it's fine. You can go ahead or no, we see some significant issues. We've actually seen a lot of deals from this property that we have rejected, and we will relay that information to you, okay? This financing condition has saved so many of our clients from situations where they've bought properties that um, we cannot get mortgage insurance on. And when I say we, I mean, it's, it's not restricted to Zola mortgages, even if it's another lender like a bank, uh, it's not going to be possible for a bank to get an approval for something that an insurer declines. Um, that's across the uh, industry. Let's let's say that. Way. Um, can you get a copy of these slides? If that's something you'd like, sure, uh, I'd be happy to share it with you. Uh, I hope that question answered. Uh, I mean, I hope the answer helped with your question there, Sergey. Um, if not, feel free to email in. And uh, I would be happy to maybe even have a short conversation with you on the phone if you need any clarification on the financing condition. Is there any limitation on mortgage square footage? For example, condo less than 500 square foot. Yes, there is. It depends on the lender. We do have lenders that let us lend in Toronto, downtown core, or condos that are less than 500 square foot. I think our limit is around 400 plus square foot with First National and TD. Anything less than that, I would really recommend um, running that property by me before placing an offer, let's say. 
There's another aspect of this uh, that you should be aware of uh, from time to time, especially if you're looking at downtown Toronto, one of the most appealing price points is properties that are mixed hotel condo properties. I believe it's one King West. I can't remember the actual address, but one of those properties on King is actually a mixed hotel condo. We're actually starting to see a lot more of that um, coming into the market. Because of the nature of how these properties actually work, where let's say it's a mix between a rental and a primary residence, a lot of lenders say no to mixed hotel condo properties. Um, well, make sure you are checking the listing for that specific wording on mixed hotel condo. Uh, <clears throat> Pramita is asking a question. I'm going to take this one before moving on because I want to cover off C is if my client asks me first time buyer, can they get the mortgage with 5% down? Yes, absolutely. As long as they qualify, as long as their ratios are in line. We can even do 5% down programs for new to Canada individuals. Uh, we have a variety of programs available. Now, let's say they don't have established credit at the moment. We can do 12 months of payment for a utility or and rent. So they'll have to be in the country for about 12 months and have paid rent and utilities for that time. And um, that way we can waive the requirement for their um, Credit history. Actually, that's one of the programs I'm going to be talking about. So let me hop into this new rule. I think you guys are going to be hearing a lot about this on the news. You're going to be getting asked a lot of questions. And it's important for you to understand there are new rules coming into effect for mortgages effective June 1st. OFSI is um, enforcing these rules and they are uh, applying specifically to uninsured mortgages. So I'll cover basically these questions in the next couple of slides. What is an uninsured mortgage? What are the new rules? How much does that, how much does this affect buying power for your client? And what should I tell my clients, okay? So what is an uninsured mortgage? If the purchase is, if the purchase price is $1 million or more, then it is considered an uninsured mortgage and it will be subject to these new rules. If uh, there's certain refinances. I don't think you have to worry about that as realtors. Uh, Non-owner occupied single unit rental properties. If it's an investment rental property, it is still subject to the uninsured rules. And if the client requires an amortization over 25 years, so, so far across the board, the only amortization or the max amortization above 25 is 30 year. And um, that will still be considered an uninsured property. So these are the criteria that you have to be worried about is if your client is purchasing a million dollars or more, if they're looking for an investment property, and if potentially, if you're aware that they're going to be doing an amortization of over 25 years to qualify, they will be subject to these new rules. And what are the new rules? The client will have to qualify at a greater of five-year minimum qualifying rate of 5.25%. So it doesn't actually matter what the contract rate of the mortgage is. When it comes to uninsured purchases, we're able to do, I think it's like 1.6 or 1.7%. That will be the contract rate that the client is actually paying interest on. But to qualify for the purchase, we have to do, we have to qualify them at a rate of 5.25% or the customer's contract rate plus 2%, right? So if the customer's contract rate is 2.29%, their qualifying rate would be 5.25% because it is, uh, it, it's the higher of 5.25% or the customer's contract rate plus 2%. Okay, so what does this actually mean and how does it affect your clients? Um, if your clients are currently looking at a home above a million dollars and if you're working in the GTA, if you're working in parts of Ottawa, if you're working in, if we have anyone from Vancouver, I mean, over a million dollars seems to be any freehold detached property in today's market, in those markets, right? So what's important for you to know is that it will affect their purchase and the effect will be 4% of the principal amount of mortgage, 
okay? Depending on how, uh, how high the purchase price is, that could be anywhere between 50 and $100,000. So if I'm out there looking for homes for clients who are um, looking in Toronto at around two, two and a half million dollars, all of a sudden their mortgage is reduced by $100,000 in terms of principal. And if it's in a highly competitive market like Lawrence Park or High Park, um, that $100,000 is quite significant because it's the difference between a winning offer and a losing offer, right? Uh, that's the sort of price delta we're looking at there and the competition realistically. So June 1st, you guys still have some time, it is the cutoff for uh, when these rules go into place. If your clients can get an approved um, agreement of purchase and sale prior to June 1st, we can get them approved at uh, current qualifying rate, which is 4.79%. Uh, so what should you tell your clients? It's really important for them to know. Now, this specific line, this first point is taken from TD. Existing pre-approvals must have a purchase and sale agreement signed before June 1st, 2021 in order to not have to requalify under the new rate rules, right? So essentially what we can do is we can pre-qualify a client today. And then if they are able to get a pre, uh, an accepted offer prior to June 1st, then they are not subject to those rules. Uh, a signed purchase and sale agreement means the offer has been accepted prior to June 1st, 2021. So if you are in negotiations with the seller or the buyer, keep that in mind. If it's dated one day, let's say May 31st, but the acceptance is June 2nd, then that is not going to be uh, able to get around this uh, loophole that I mentioned here. You have to have the acceptance date on the offer has to be June 1st, 2021. For refinances, any new submissions or resubmissions with material changes. Okay, so don't worry about that last point. I should not have copied that. Um, refinances do not really apply, but this is the major change that's happening uh, in terms of the mortgage industry in the near future. Uh, the, 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 I guess the, what they're trying to do is cool down the market. What will actually happen is there's gonna be a rush on the market until June 1st, and then after June 1st, it may level off um, just to see what the changes are. And um, basically in the summer, we're expecting a crazy market again. I don't expect these changes to really change much or affect anything. The issue in the market is not that people are over, over leveraging themselves. The issue in the market is that there's not enough supply and there's too much demand, and this does nothing to address that issue. Um, we do have some time. I kind of want to get into this. I did cover this in my last meeting as well, and I kind of uh, think it's beneficial for you to uh, understand as potentially new to business agents. Um, quick, quick look. Yeah, there's quite a few new names in the, in the participants. So let me just take a quick look at questions. Uh, yes, we do. I believe this question came from Jane. It's a great question. If we're listing a rural property, for example, with no comparables, do you have access to an appraiser who could assist with balance? When it comes to purchasing a property, whether you're on a buyer side or a seller side, it's really important to know that the in the process of doing the due diligence for the purchase, the lender is looking for looking at a vast number of things to really qualify the client. One of them is what is the agreed to purchase price of a property? And the second part of that is what is the actual market value of this home? So when determining the market value of a home, some lenders have moved to a model that's called an ABM. It's an automated valuation model. It basically looks at the features of a home, the very basic features, the number of bedrooms, number of bedroom, bathrooms, um, square footage, location, and style of homes, so detached, backslid, bungalow, whatever you want to call it. And then it sees um, what are the comparable sales, and then it spits out a number. But one of the more sort of uh, manual approaches to this is 
a third party called an appraiser goes out and looks at the property and uh, looks at comparable sales potentially in a much broader market if it is in a rural area and gets an idea of what the property is valued at. We have had a lot of issues where, let's say in an EVM, from the EVM, the appraisal comes short. So the lender says, to proceed with this deal, we will need a full appraisal on the property. And what we can do is um, we do have some, uh, some appraisers who can work basically in our favor. And we can also give them some comparables in advance. So we can say, hey, look, here are the properties we feel best represent the value of this home. And uh, we want you to use them when you're coming up with your model. Uh, sorry if that was quick, but uh, I just wanted to cover that because it was a good question. Uh, is interest only payments program available as an option? Uh, yes, yes, we do have that. Yes, we do have that. Uh, reach out to me on a case by case basis. How about pre construction assignment just over $1 million? Is it considered as an uninsured mortgage? Uh, Assignment sales are tricky. Uh, what we're seeing with pre-construction is the lender will look at both the original agreed to purchase price and then the resale price. So let's say the builder sold it to the original seller at $800,000 and the seller was able to resell it as an assignment sale for above a million dollars. Um, what would happen is that property would be considered uninsured because of the new purchase price on the assignment sale. That is a really good question though. Let me run it by my lenders. If I do find anything contrary to what I said, I will post on workplace. Okay, we have eight minutes left. I'm gonna to try to cover this. It's important for you guys to know this because of the, you know, the nature of Zolo's um, uh, the nature of you working at Zolo, let's put it that way. So you, you will be working with lease leads from time to time. And with those lease leads, what it, what's important to understand is that the nature of qualifying a lease lead is essentially almost the same as qualifying a mortgage. What you're not doing is working through our systems and pulling credit through our systems, but you're doing basically everything else anyway. You're looking at things like credit score, bank statements, employment, and motivation, and you're trying to judge whether that information is enough for a, um, a landlord to consider your tenant, essentially. And what's, um, what's really interesting is that because of the nature of today's market, let me go to the next slide so I can explain. The nature of today's market is highly competitive. There is, uh, just like the buy side, there is a, there is a dry, dry spell that's hit the supply market and the demand has gone up. And with that high demand, uh, it is what I guess could be considered a landlord's market where landlords can expect higher than asking even for rental properties or lease properties. And um, if you're working with a tenant, that tenant may be advised to say, give up to 12 months rent up front to the landlord to secure a property. Now, with the price point of today's rentals, let's say anywhere between 2,500 and 3,000 plus, that means that the client may qualify for one of our mortgage programs. If your client is able to put down 12 months or even six months rent up front, um, that may qualify them for a purchase at 5% down if they do have more available funds or if they're able to get funds from a close family member to make up a shortfall. And that means that you could convert technically a lease lead into a buy lead. And just because of the number of increase that we do see, there is a huge opportunity there to capitalize on this. Where this may be best applied is new to Canada clients. We see a lot of clients who've recently immigrated to Canada from India or um, you know, China, and what they're bringing is a vast amount of assets, so their life savings, but they may not have an established credit history. And with our new to Canada programs, we're able to 
qualify clients as soon as they hit the ground in Canada, um, regardless of legal status. I mean, with some exception, as long as they are work permit, PR, student visa, um, that's basically it. We can qualify them for a purchase here in Canada at as little as 5% down. So if you are seeing clients of this uh, criteria or this demographic and new to Canada, uh, a lot of assets, a lot of cash available. Uh, maybe they haven't established income yet. Maybe they, they definitely do not have established credit yet. We do have programs for this. Um, there are different programs available. So if they are employed and they have lived in the country for let's say a year and a half or so, uh, we would need employment proof plus 12 months history of two trade lines and rent. If they are high net worth individuals, we do have uh, a program that allows us to go, I believe it's 10% down with no employment verification and no credit verification. All we need to see is 12 months principal interest tax and heat for mortgage payment in a bank account in Canada. Okay, so we have a lot of programs available for new to Canada and I really, really would like to educate you on these criteria. Um, please be aware that if you do see clients like this, send them to us for pre-approvals because we recognize uh, what, uh, what elements of their profile to really focus on when it comes to submitting to a lender and getting them approved or pre-qualified. And there is an opportunity there where in today's market, let's say, you know, a client is thinking of renting, um, we can get them pre-approved for a purchase, maybe not in the same market, but definitely close by. And with remote work, that's really opening up a lot of smaller towns in Ontario uh, for your clients to consider in terms of purchases. So um, lease leads can be converted to buy leads and they can be done at quite a good pace. Okay, so once again, I think I should go back to this because we're almost at time. Uh, please refer us leads through email and we will reply to them as, uh, basically within the hour. I think an hour is probably um, the worst case scenario. And what we're supposed to, what we do is uh, we do have access to the real estate CRM as well to um, look at these clients contact information and uh, pre-qualify them and get your response. Um, Uh, I do have a couple minutes left. I don't know if I have a slide on appraisal shortfall. I don't, not in this one. Um, yeah, okay, so I'll leave this slide up. I'm going to speak a little bit verbally just before our time is up about appraisal shortfall, which I did cover uh, a bit earlier. Uh, there is the risk to clients nowadays that they will have an agreed purchase and sale agreement. So they will have a firm deal for a property at a price that is much higher than the actual market value for the property. What we call that is an appraisal risk. Potentially what that could mean is let's say your client pays $1.5 million for a property and the lender does an appraisal on the property and the closest comparable sold come back at 1.45 or 1.425 and what the lender will say is, I am only going to lend on the appraised amount. So they would say, if the appraisal came back at 1.45, we're only going to lend at 1.45, and the shortfall, so roughly $50,000 in this example, will be up to the client to cover. Um, there, the easiest way to fix that problem is for the client to have a lot of money in the bank account and just say, okay, I'm gonna take the hit and I'm going to pay the $50,000. The second easiest way is for the client to go ask family, look, I need $50,000. I don't care where you get it, whether it's a line of credit, I just need that money. And um, we give that money to the client for the purchase, for the shortfall. And that way they can cover the purchase and close on the deal. The worst case scenario is we have to go to private lending with either a second mortgage or some other combination and the client will um, 
have to rearrange their down payment so that they are still paying the shortfall, but we can go to a higher LTV with the mortgage and somehow close on the deal. So there are multiple ways to close on a deal uh, to 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 uh, address appraisal risk. I'm at time now, so I have to close up. Um, if you have questions or if you have concerns about appraisal risk, reach out to me via email mortgages at zolo.ca. I'll be happy to help. And please send us your pre-approvals. We'd be happy to work with you. Um, thank you for your time today. We had a good turnout. I hope it was beneficial. I try to do this on a monthly basis. So um, I'll see you guys again next month, I'm sure. And um, yeah, thanks, Jane. Well, thank you for joining me. And yeah, I look forward to next month. Thanks for always doing this with me. No problem. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.